Welcome to the Sun River Angler's Fly Tying Corner for this month. I'm going to tie an Adam's fly pattern. This is a fly I've fished since I was a young kid. Uh, casting a five and a half foot spinning rod with four pound test monofilament and an Adam's to willing brook trout and rainbow trout in a high Sierra stream years ago. It is still my favorite favorite pattern and I fish this quite routinely uh, during calabatus hatches and at other times. It's a, it's a fly that's been around for a long time. Originally tied in 1922 by a fly tire in Michigan and uh, so it has stood the test of time. Give the Adams a try. It's an easy tie and I think you'll like it. So let's review the materials list for the Adams fly pattern. I'll cover these one by one so you get a good sense of the what's and why's I'm using for this pattern. For a hook, I'm going to use a fire hole 419 in size 14. This is a barbless competition dry fly hook that I really like for this pattern. For the thread, I've got 16-aught Beavis in black. And I like this because it's a really fine thread and it doesn't build up bulk on the fly. And yet, it's very strong. For the tail, I'm using whiting Coque de Leon, which is a feather that's very stiff and it holds up well to the rigors needed by a, a tail on a classic dry fly. I've got this in natural pardo and you'll see in the picture it's got a little speckling to it that makes it an excellent choice for this pattern. For the abdomen, I've got super fine dry fly dubbing and it's in Adam's Gray. This will allow me to build a nice uh, tapered body on this pattern. For the wings, I'm going to use a Whiting Hebert Minor Wet Fly Hackle. This is a hen cape and the feathers are a little bit more webby and they give a, a nice silhouette on this pattern once it's tied on the hook. And lastly, for the hackle, I'm going to use one brown whiting dry fly saddle hackle and one whiting grizzly saddle hackle. And I'm going to marry these two together and tie them on together and wind them for the hackle on this fly. I use whiting dry fly saddles because they're the best in the world um, for dry flies. So let's get started on this fly pattern. I'm going to tie on my thread right at the two-thirds point of the hook. And setting proportions is really important on dry flies. And so I'll, I'll begin setting those proportions with my thread tie-in. Next, I've chosen two hackles off my hen grizzly cape. And I'm going to oppose them so they flare outward. And then I'm going to pull the barbs right back to the point where I want to tie them in. I'm going to pull these back and then place the thread gently over these and then tie them tightly in place. Next, I'll tie a series of supporting wraps right in front of the wing to prop those wings straight upright. And then I'll do a figure eight through the middle of the wings to go ahead and part them and set them in place. And if I've got a stray barb, I can just clip those out of the way at this point. Next, I've taken about a half inch grouping of Coque de Leon barbs and I'm going to pull them together, set proportions on the hook, and then clip off the uh, 
excess before I tie this on. And then I'll go ahead and tie it on right behind the wing and tie that back to the tail set position. And straighten up those barbs just slightly. Next, I'm going to tie in my dubbing material and I'll grab a light group of dubbing and I'm going to twist this onto the thread and catch just a few fibers onto the hook as I tie this on and then wrap that thread like yarn around or wrap the uh, fibers around the thread like yarn. And I'll begin to wind this, and I'll wind back to the tail set, and then I'll wind forward to create a tapered body. I had a few extra fibers on this, and so I wound it all the way to the wing. And that's okay, because I'm going to wind backwards and ultimately hackle over this area, so that'll get covered up. The last step on this fly is to hackle it. And I've taken my grizzly saddle and my brown saddle and I've married them um, together dry fly style I'm gonna tie this with a shiny side back and the dull side forward tie it in right there at the uh, section right behind the wing and then I'll wind forward up to the head of the pattern and I'm gonna immediately start winding these two feathers together. You can wind them one at a time, but if you keep them tightly married together, they'll wind uh, perfectly forward. And so I'll wind two ra complete wraps behind the wing and two wraps in front of the wing. To tie this off, I pulled the feathers upright, crossed them with the thread, and then pulled the heckle uh, hackles back to me and cross the thread only on the stem and that's so I don't catch a lot of the barbs as I'm tying this off. And I'll clip off the excess. After I've tied off the hackles I can clip any stray barbs that are not where I want them. And then I'll whip finish this and finish up the pattern. So let me rotate the uh, fly in the vise so you can see this pattern from all sides. So that has been your Sun River Anglers Fly Tying Corner for this month. I hope you've enjoyed the Adams Fly Pattern and we'll give this one a try. I know I sure like to cast it over willing brook trout in a high mountain lake. If you've liked this video, please subscribe to our YouTube page or visit us at Sun River Anglers on Facebook. Thanks for watching.